I call this meeting to order. We will please rise for the invocation and pledge of allegiance. Please bow our heads, please. Heavenly Father, embrace us with your grace as we make decision this evening. We thank you, Lord, for allowing us to work closely with our neighboring communities to better service our citizens. We thank you, Lord, for sending FEMA to assist our community and the people affected during the flood. We pray the community is treated with compassion and service to their needs. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands. One nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Chief Dominguez. Mayor, City Council. Uh, back on March the 30th, uh, we had uh, Assistant Chief Tony Garcia retire after 36 years of service. Uh, obviously, that left a vacancy in the Assistant Chief's position. Uh, over these past three months, uh, obviously, considered uh, the staff that I have, and today I wanted to introduce uh, Jody Allen Tittle, a lieutenant that I am promoting to the position of Assistant Chief of Police. Uh, Mr. Tittle has been with us for 18 years. The last five years as a lieutenant in charge of the Criminal Investigations Bureau. Uh, he has a bachelor's degree in uh, criminal justice concentration and police administration. Uh, he's also a graduate of the certified public manager program that the city sent him to here uh, back in December 2015. And as well, he's recently a graduate of Sam Houston State University Leadership Command College. It's the executive police college for police executives, and he just graduated from that program as well in February 2015. Very difficult decisions to make. Uh, I think I have a great staff and the people that I have, uh, obviously, and uh, Along with the promotion for Mr. Tittle to the position of assistant chief, obviously that opens other vacancies. And here with us today is also uh, Sergeant Javier Ramon, which will be promoting to the position of police lieutenant. Uh, Corporal Orlando Cedillo, promoting to the uh, position of police sergeant. And criminal investigator Mario Manforte, promoting to the position of police corporal. Uh, very proud of this gentleman. Uh, they studied hard in their promotional exams. Obviously, they all are part of the civil service process and uh, scored the adequate points to be able to be named to these positions. Uh, very proud of all their accomplishments. Um, I'd like our new assistant chief to say a few words. Well, even though I am the spokesperson, I am not too keen on public speaking, but it's an honor and a privilege to serve everyone in this community. My dedication to everyone will never fade away. After 18 years, it's just exciting coming into work, as I did the first day I came to work here. Leadership is not a position. Leadership is an action, and that will always be true and dear to me as I serve this community and its residents and everyone that I come in contact with. Thank you. Thank you. On behalf of the Citizens of Mission, I would like to just uh, commend you all, all four of you, the, for your promotions, and thank you for serving in our city. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Take a picture with the council.
Thank you. Good evening. My name is Jennifer Nava. I'm Director of Events and Marketing for the Greater Mission Chamber of Commerce, presenting today on behalf of our President and CEO, Robert Roussel, who's out of town on training. Reporting today on recent and upcoming events. Recently, we had June 26, our Pizza with the President, new and potential member orientation, which boasted 18 new members and 12 potential members that attended. We also held on June 27th a ribbon cutting together with Doctors Hospital at Renaissance Health Women's Imaging Center in Edinburgh. We collaborated with McCowan, Edinburgh, and Far Chambers of Commerce. Hundreds of people attended, including 25 to 30 Mission Chamber of Commerce members from this community. For upcoming events, on this Saturday, July 14th, we are happy to collaborate with 5x5 Five Five Brewing Company, veteran-owned and operated brewery located here in the Mission Seed Building at 801 South Bryan Road. They will be expecting several hundred people from the community in attendance, live music, food and beverage, and we will be hosting a formal ceremony at 2 p.m. and invite anyone from the public to attend. Other ribbon cuttings include July 17th, Maria Grajeva Apple Designs, at 1242 East U.S. Business 83 here in Mission at 11 a.m. July 20th, El Tisoncito Restaurant at 1230 p.m. located at 201 South Sherry Road in Mission. And July 26th, Azur Financial Group, 11 a.m. at 1909 West Mile 3, Suite 600 in Mission. Last, but certainly not least, we have an upcoming workshop open to the public as well as members of the Chamber of Commerce on August the 7th at the Mission Chamber Building from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. called Listening to Your Business. It is held by UTRGV's Small Business Development Center. There is a small fee to attend for uh, materials. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. That's a recognition of that. Yes, sir. Um, as we all know, we did have a, a storm that hit our area back in this past month, June the 8th. And uh, it was really the community coming together, Mayor, working together to make sure that uh, as a city of mission, we come together and, and go through this these times that unfortunately affect many families in our area. As a matter of fact, we had about 308 uh, people that uh, are both through the police department and the fire department were able to go out to different homes and, and rescue from the flooded areas. And so today we'd like to recognize not only the volunteers but also the agencies that were involved in helping us through the recovery stages. And it is for their unwavering support to mission families during the disaster recovery efforts following a storm that caused major damages to our community. So I'm going to ask uh, Ms. Aida Lerma if you can help us come up here and recognize some of these agencies who participated and also um, more than anything the volunteers because we all know as you know as as employees of the city we all get recognized by receiving a paycheck at the end of the, of the week but certainly the volunteers is really where the heart is at and so we really want to applaud the volunteers that are here today and, and supported not only the city of mission but supported the families that were affected through this flood so I want to congratulate all of them and, and I know the members of the agencies and, and the volunteers are here today to be recognized so Ms. Lerma if you can help us with that. I'm going to ask the council mayor if we could all come down and acknowledge the individuals who are going to be recognized today. Thank you. Texas Department of Public Safety, Lieutenant James Davidson. With 
Texas Parks and Wildlife, Gay Morden Harry Rokoski. All hands and hurts and hearts. Our community knows them as the Purple Shirts. They've been all around Mission. Mike Baresh. Ms. Flora Flores. And Ms. Irma Flores while she accepts on behalf of her mother. Ms. Debbie Alvarez. With the Hidalgo County Sheriff's Office, Chief Deputy Mario Lopez. Home Depot. Do we have a representative here from Home Depot? Yes. Welcome. <laughs> Texas Conservation Corp or AmeriCorp? Let's give them a big round of applause. Do we have any members of the Garcia family? No. Let's give them a big round of a hand. Catholic Mission Trips Group from Iowa. They're out working. They're out working. Mike, would you accept? Excellent. And Cross Church. Anyone here from Cross Church? Mr. Blatha. Thank you. Calling for the department reports. Uh, is there any questions by any of the city council persons? Anything in particular? To if there are no questions, I'd like to entertain a, a motion Mayor, to accept them. I move to accept. Uh, we have a motion. Do I hear a second? Second. We have a motion and second. Do we have any further discussion? Any questions? All those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed, same sign. Motion carries. 
I would like to call for citizen participation. Anybody from the audience to come before us? Uh, you have uh, three minutes, and please state your name and your address. You're, you have the podium, sir. Okay, my name is Roberto Hernandez. I'm a Mission resident. I was born here in Mission. I'm an Army veteran. I come here with concerns, uh, basically, because I never got reply back when I was asking. This is my third flight. This is the third flight I go through. Uh, the second flight I went through, I spoke to Robert Salinas, and uh, he had told me that the problem was that the cutoff for the pipes to go to the canals. What is your address, sir? I'm sorry? Your address. Uh, 1706 East 21st Street. Thank you, sir. And I spoke to Robert Salinas back a few years back when the, sec when the second flood, and he had told me two things. He had told me that the cutoff for the pipes to go to the to the levees or back to the canal was about three streets behind us. So our street, and I believe it was Marvin Street, the water would just stay there. And then he had told me that they were looking at doing something about it and also putting bigger pipes. And then, of course, the church got built in front of us, higher than us. I know they put a dish there, but when they did that, they used to get water there, but now everything's coming our way. This flood was terrible. This is the worst. I'm very stressful. I'm tired, to tell the truth. I don't know what's been done or what has not been done. I've asked, I've called. I haven't gotten any answers. I know that that subdivision needs something to be done. Those houses were not cheap. They were expensive. <laughs> And, uh, you know, you can't really sell. If you sell, you have to lie. People lie, you know, because they want to sell. But I don't like to do that. So my concern is basically I want some response back, knowing what's going to happen, what they're going to do, if anything's going to be due about the water going to the levee, so going back into somewhere instead of just staying there. And this time I had, when it rained, I called the city. I think I started calling from 9 o'clock. The water didn't get pumped out till 1.30 in the morning. I would have just sat there, and it, it actually was up here. My house was two to three feet in some places. It was just bad. I lost, you know, like everybody else that went through the flood. But I'm just saying this is my third flood. This is, it's, I need I need some answers. I need. But by law, we cannot respond to you, but I can give you my card so you can give me a call, sir, and, uh, and I will go, I, I will visit with you. And, uh, and we are working on our drainage problem that we've had. And we, you know, we are working on it. That's all I can tell you. But I cannot uh, answer to you. Okay, well, that's really that's what I came for because, you know, I, I know that, you know, this is it's just devastating. It's already uh, I'm already 62 years old. I'm still working, but this is stressful. And I thank you know, all the help, hands and hearts. I could have never made it. I mean, they really helped clean up right. and cut. Uh, Without them, it would be even harder and more stressful. Thank you. Mr. Hernandez, before you leave, Mr. Randy Perez, one of our deputy city managers, is going to take again your address and your phone number, and we'll reach out to you tomorrow morning, sir. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Martin. Yes, sir. Any other person wants to address the council under citizens participation, that, any item that is not on the agenda? Any item that is not on the agenda, please come forward, state your name and your address for the record. And uh. Mayor, City Council, uh, I forgot to tell you, just uh, so you'll know, on Friday at 9 o'clock we'll have the pinning ceremony for these four young men uh, to, to promote them to the different positions here at 9 o'clock on Friday. You're all invited. Thank you. Thank you. Where, where As one of our public. Where will that be? Here, here at the here City at Council table. Chambers, okay. Thank 9 o'clock. Thank you. Any other, sir? Just you have three minutes and not item not on the agenda, please. Yes, sir. Thank you, Omar I. Rodriguez. I represent the Food Bank in Rio Grande Valley, um, located in Far Texas. Uh, I just wanted to give you a quick update on what we've been doing um, as of the day after the flooding event. We have uh, served. Uh, 21,545 people with uh, relief efforts of uh, food and water and cleanup uh, supplies, uh, totaling 473,000 pounds uh, distributed within uh, the three-county area, particularly precincts one and three. 
uh, in, in the cities of Westlake, Mercedes, and FAR. Uh, we also, um, under Annex T, we're also uh, coordinating volunteer and uh, donations management. Uh, coordinating with the BOADS, uh, like all hands and hearts. And um, I wanted to share with you and with the residents of uh, Mission a couple of telephone numbers. Uh, for those that uh, need help with cleaning their homes affected by the flooding, the number is 1-800-451-1954. 1-800-451-1954. And for those who are able to volunteer to help our VOADs uh, do a lot of that cleanup, we have another number to register as a volunteer, 956 242-4773. And they can also email at volunteerrgv at gmail.com. And that's pretty much all I had. Thank you very much for the opportunity. Thank, Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Anybody else wants to address the council under citizens' participation, state your name and your address. You have three minutes. And please, the item not be on the agenda. <coughs> Honorable Mayor, City Council, our City Manager. My name is Connie Garza. I live at 923 Bowen in Mission. And I'm here to compliment the, the Mayor and the City Council and all the City employees for your leadership during the flood. It was very evident um, by the response the participation and the commitment that I saw from my leaders during this time. And I simply want to thank you for a job well done. And uh, they say leaders lead by example. And unfortunately, unfortunately, during your first days in office, as mayor, you know, you were confronted with this issue. And we saw that you exemplify the leadership in our community by rolling up your sleeves and being out there, participating in the rescue missions, filling out sandbags, doing whatever needed to be done to ensure the safety of our citizens. Not only that, but ensuring that the city of Mission got the assistance that we needed from state and federal government. So once again, I want to thank the mayor, the city council, city manager, and of course all of the city employees. I don't want to leave anybody out, but the police, the fire, public works, we saw them all out there diligently working to protect the citizens of Mission. So thank you. Thank you, Connie. Thank you, ma'am. Anybody else wants to address the council under citizens' participation in any item that's not on the agenda? All you have to do is come up to the mic, state your name and address, and you're free to speak for three minutes. Nobody? And then I call for the public hearings. 1.0, 1.1, 1 .1, planning and zoning. 1.1a rezoning of uh, track 1.81. Good afternoon, Mayor and Council. Item 1.1a is a public hearing for a rezoning of a 1.81 acre tract of land, more or less, out of lot 28 1 West Edition of Sherryland Subdivision. The property is owned AOI and the intent is to rezone it to C3 General mm -hmm. Business. The applicant is Juan Quintanilla. If the council is inclined to approve this rezoning request, it would require the adoption of an ordinance. On June 27, 2018, the Planning and Zoning Commission held a public hearing to consider this rezoning request. The subject site is located at the southeast corner of West Mile 2 Road and Inspiration Road. The surrounding land uses include general commercial to the north, R1 single family also to the north, to the east, we have a vacant, uh, or not a vacant, but we have a single property that's owned agriculture. Uh, there is a single family home at that property. To the west, we have C3 General Commercial, and to the south, we have R1 single family. So the C3 request is consistent with what's in the area. 
Uh, the future land use map also designates this area as a general commercial land use. There was no public opposition during the PNZ meeting. Uh, the board unanimously recommended approval. Staff is recommending approval as is our city manager. This is a public hearing. Item 1.1A is now before you. This is a public hearing, so if anybody wants to speak in, for, in favor or against this, uh, this rezoning, uh, please come to, to the podium, state your name and address, and state your position or against. Anybody wants to state for or against this rezoning? It is a public hearing. Again, this is a public hearing to, for rezoning. Uh, anybody would like to uh, state for or against the rezoning? Since nobody wants to speak, I would like to entertain the motion to approve and adopt Ordinance 4648. Move to approve. Approval. Second. We have a motion and second to adopt uh, Ordinance 4648. And this I open it for further discussion by the council. Any other council members wants to wants to discuss anything in particular? And this I open it for voting. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed, same sign. Motion carries uh, 1.1B, Mr. Savile. Thank you, Mayor Council. Item 1.1B is a public hearing for a rezoning of a 0.99 acre tract of land, more or less, out of Lot 28-1, West Edition of Sherryland. The property is owned AOI, and the intent is to rezone it to C4. The applicant is Juan Quintanilla. And if the council is inclined to approve this rezoning request, it would require the adoption of an ordinance. On June 27, 2018, the Planning and Zoning Commission held a public hearing to consider this request. The subject site is located uh, just south of the property that we saw in item 1.1A. Um, this is a one acre tract that the applicant wanted to uh, rezone C4 heavy commercial. Uh, his intent was to build a warehouse facility. Uh, this is a, a rendering that would show what the applicant wanted to build. Uh, there was one phone call from a resident that lives on the south side. Uh, there is a residential subdivision to the south, as you can see there on the aerial. And his concerns were that the uh, C4 use would devaluate his property. And uh, it was a phone call that uh, staff received. Uh, at the day of the city of the Planning and Zoning Commission, we did discuss this with the applicant as well as with the Planning and Zoning Commission and uh, the applicant was receptive to a C3 general commercial uh, zoning. So uh, there was no opposition from any, uh, anybody present at the PNZ meeting for the C3 request. So the Planning and Zoning Commission recommended uh, for a C3 zoning instead of the C4 zoning. Staff is also recommending denial of C4, but we are in support of a C3. Our city manager is also in support of a C3. Um, this is a public hearing. Item 1.1B is now before you. Uh, this is a public hearing. I open it for anybody from the audience that would like to uh, give us some comments and for or against, <coughs> or against the, uh, the rezoning. Again, this is a public hearing for rezoning. Anybody that wants to give uh, the comment or for or against the rezoning. This is a public hearing. And nobody wants to come up and say for or against the rezoning. If that's the case, is the applicant I'll, I'll, here, Mayor? Huh? Is the applicant here? Is the applicant here? Yes, he is. Do you want to come up here and say? Well, I just want to confirm that he's okay with the C3. Yes, ma'am, I am. Okay. Uh, yes, I attended the PNZ meeting uh, last time, so yeah, I'm okay with it, yes. All right. Yeah. Thank Some you. Of the options that are available if, if, if they do uh, rezone the property C3 is that they could apply for s some of the uses that are typically seen in, like in light industrial areas through the use of a CUP. Okay. So. All right. Good. And that was explained to the, yes. to the applicant. Good. 
There's a motion for in approval, Mayor. Second. Uh, and let me close the public oh, sorry. closing the public <coughs> hearing, and I will entertain a motion to adopt Ordinance 4649. And there's a do I hear a second? Second. Uh, second has been given. Uh, this I open up for further discussion for all the city council members. Do you have any further discussion? Have we satisfied uh, uh, all your answers, Ms. Garza? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, in this, I open it for the voting. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, same sign. The motion carries, and we'll open the public hearing for 1.1C. Mr. Acevedo. Thank you, Mayor and Council. Item 1.1C is a public hearing for a rezoning of a tract of land out of the northwest 9.96 acres of lot 203 John H. Cherry subdivision. The property is currently zoned C4 heavy commercial, and the intent is to rezone it to R1T. The applicant is Eduardo Carriaga. And if the council is inclined to approve this rezoning request, it would require the adoption of an ordinance. On June 27, 2018, the Planning and Zoning Commission held a public hearing to consider this rezoning request. The subject site is located 800 feet south of Business Highway 83 along the west side of Ragland Road. The surrounding zones include heavy commercial and R3 multifamily to the north, R3 multifamily residential to the east, R2 duplex fourplex to the west, and to the south we have a combination of mobile modular homes and R2s. And uh, the future land use map does reflect this area as a general commercial land use. However, when seeing the, the, some of the residential uses already existing in the area, um, rezoning the property to R1T is considered a less dense uh, land use. So staff is in favor of a downsizing from a heavy commercial to a R1T zoning. There was no public opposition during the PNZ meeting. The board recommended approval. Staff is recommending approval, as is our city manager. This is a public hearing. Item 1.1C is now before you. This is a public hearing for uh, rezoning. Anybody interested in uh, even for or against uh, the rezoning, please come to the podium. This is a public hearing for rezoning. If anybody's interested in providing information or or request questions on um, for or against the rezoning. This is a public hearing for rezoning. In this, I uh, close the public hearing and uh, I will entertain a, a motion to adopt ordinance 4650. Do I hear a motion? So moved. So we have a motion. I have a second to, to adopt uh, Ordinance 4650. And this I open it for further discussion individually by each city council member that would like to ask any questions on the ordinance. I would just like to comment that I think that's uh, more appropriate for the area. So it's a move in the right direction, I think. Currently, there's a daycare facility that the intent is to demolish the current building and start from scratch. Good point. Anybody else? Is I open it for voting? All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, same sign. Motion carries and we'll open the public hearing for 1.1D. Thank you, Mayor and Council. Okay. Item 1.1D is a public hearing for a conditional use permit for the sale and on-site consumption of alcoholic beverages at the 5x5 Five Five Brewing Company. The address is 801 North Bryan Road, being Lot 1, Tamkin Subdivision. The property is zoned <coughs> light industrial, and the applicant is George Rice. And if the council is inclined to approve this conditional <coughs> use permit, it would require the adoption <coughs> of an ordinance as well as wet zoning the property. On June 27, 2018, the Planning and Zoning Commission held a public hearing to consider this conditional use permit request. The subject site is located at the southwest corner of Bryan Road and Business Highway 83. <coughs> The 5x5 Five Five Brewing Company is a veteran-owned and operated craft brewery. While the applicant currently has a business license to brew and distribute from this location, the applicant would now like to offer the sale and on-site consumption of alcoholic beverages on the second and fourth Saturday of every, of every month. In talking to the applicant, the establishment has also agreed to impose a three-drink limit to its customers. Uh, as far as parking is concerned, there, there are a total of 221 parking spaces that are held in common at the seed building. 
And uh, the hours of operation will be from 2 p.m. to 10 p.m. on the second and fourth Saturday of each month. And there are no residential uses within 300 feet of the proposed um, establishment. There was no opposition during the PNZ meeting. The board unanimously recommended approval. The staff is recommending approval subject to a two-year term at which time the applicant will have to renew their conditional use permit and TABC license. We're also uh, requiring that, that they wet zone the property and that they impose the, the three pint or 48 ounce limit to its customers. Our city manager is also recommending approval. This is a public hearing. Item 1.1 D is now before you. Uh, this is a public hearing and I open it for anybody from the audience that would like to talk in favor or against uh, this conditional use permit. This is a public hearing. Anybody that would like to give us feedback on the conditional use permit? Is or the, against? Is the applicant here? Yes. The applicant's yes. here? Mr. Rice. Good afternoon. My name is George. Councilman, Mayor. Mayor. Any questions? <laughs> I have one question. Go ahead. Why, why are you <coughs> limiting yourself to just the second and fourth? Uh, it was an agreement we had um, with the previous administration um, to, because our main aim is manufacturing and production. Uh, we wanted in-house sales to, to increase marketing aspects for it because we have people coming from outside the air, Austin, they're called, uh, part of my language, uh, beer snobs that come down from the area. So we wanted to have that marketing aspect to the company. Um, so we agreed with the, the city uh, on the terms that we would operate twice a month or uh, once or twice a month so people can come in and consume alcohol on premise. Okay. But would you be in agreement? I have a question. Go ahead. Um, so in your original scope now with new administration, what, what would be the future of your plans for it if you were to be operating more on just a twice? Uh, our goal is... Our, our goal is to upgrade uh, as quickly as possible. So we have a contract right now. Again, we're manufacturing and production um, capacity uh, with LNF at 250 kegs a month is what we're starting off with. And we'll have to upgrade relatively quickly. Um, and our goal is to eventually move out of the building and to some place we're looking at properties right now across the city that we want to build a larger establishment and a larger brewery so we can fit 30, uh, 30 barrel vessels and everything in there. But in-house consumption definitely would help uh, on the marketing aspect of it because we do have people that are coming in and it's difficult, like, hey, go to this bar, go to this bar. So would you be okay with every Saturday? Yes, I would be okay with, uh, you? yeah, it would definitely there, assist us greatly. Is that something that we could consider? Cause how about, how about uh, uh, yeah. every day that they're open, you know, every day that they're open. And, I mean, the, the permit also has for only three drinks, right. you know. So if they're an operation, you know, I... I don't see why why not every day, you know, would, would, would that be all? No, that would be amazing for us. Actually, that would help us out tremendously. Yeah, just remember the sales tax. Yep, you sales know. tax. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so. Is that something that we can amend at this point, or does it have to go back to? Legal? No. It, no. Yeah, we'll ask legal. The, the item was already presented to PNZ. PNZ gave a recommendation. Um, the council can can change that recommendation, but all we need is a recommendation from PNZ. So the council can proceed if the council wishes. Um, my only concern is I don't know if our um, if our recommendation to PNZ was limited to only those two, mm -hmm. and that that's what I would need to know from staff if is if that was our recommendation to PNZ. Yes, we presented it the way that they had agreed with uh, with Alex Mead and the previous administration. Yes. Is Alex here? Alex is here. Alex. State your name and address, and uh, <laughs> because it is a public hearing. Uh, my name is Alex Mead. The address is 2700 Santa Eliana, Mission, Texas. Thank you, sir. Um, no, we have no problem with them uh, consuming beer there uh, every day with the with the limit of the three of the drink three drink minimum. There is no access from the from the inside of the seed building into the into their brewery. It's locked by TABC. It has to be it has to remain locked. The entrance would be from the parking lot into the building. So okay. with that condition, we, we wouldn't have an issue. Okay. Well, Thank you. Thank you, sir. Then that would be my motion. Well, uh, uh, let, let's not close not the public sorry. hearing because I still need to ask it, it now that, that we're making these comments. I mean, is there anybody from the floor 
or, or the audience that would like to say for or against it of what uh, the discussion that we had. Come on, man. Yes, ma'am. State your name and address. And state your position for or against. Maxi Lou Link uh, from the Upper Valley Art Link. <coughs> Excuse me. Mayor, city manager, and city council, here's our chance to open up mission. We always want to think outside the box, and we want to start growing. And we are a family organization, a city, yes. and we'll still stay a city because they're not going to overdo the beer serving. And we really need more in mission. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Anybody else wants to for or against? For or against? This is a public hearing for or against feedback on a conditional use permit. I will close the public hearing and open it for uh, accept the, the adoption of ordinance 4651. Do I hear a motion? My motion is to allow the um, um, company to serve beer while they're open. Uh, just to meet the TABC rules. Second. Uh, we have a motion and second to allow the, the request, uh, which is, is it, it is okay for the council to do, Abel? Yes, Mayor, th this is a, a conditional use permit, and so the motion is for approval subject to the TABC rules, so there's no, there's no problem with that. Yeah, thank you. In this, uh, any, any other city council member wants to make a comment or, or su suggestion or? And this I open it for for voting. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed, same sign. Motion carries unanimously. Good. Congratulations. Good luck. Good luck. We'll be there Saturday. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. I'll open the public hearing for 1.1 E, conditional use permit renewal. Thank you, Mayor and Council. Item 1.1 E is a public hearing for a conditional use permit renewal for a three drive through lane and one uh, ATM lane for the Texas National Bank at 501 North Sherry Road. This is a lot one, Hofflin subdivision. The property is owned C4. Texas National Bank is the applicant. And if the council is inclined to approve this conditional use permit request, it would require the adoption of an ordinance. On June 27, 2018, the Planning and Zoning Commission held a public hearing to consider this conditional use permit request. The subject site is located 250 feet north of East 4th Street along the north side of Sherry Road. This was a new bank that opened uh, in the summer of 2017. It's been in operation for a little bit over 12 months now, and uh, there have been no issues with the existing drive through service lanes. They're located along the south side of the building, and uh, it's, a beautiful, it's a beautiful building. I mean, it's heavily landscaped. Um, it's, a, it's been a really nice addition to the area. There was no public opposition during the PNZ meeting. The board unanimously recommended for approval of the conditional use permit for life of use. Staff is also recommending approval for life of use, as is our city manager. This is a public hearing. Item 1.1E is now before you. <coughs> Uh, this is a public hearing. I open it for input from the audience uh, in favor or against uh, the conditional use permit renewal. Again, this is a public hearing in favor of for or against the conditional use permit renewal. This is a public hearing for feedback on the conditional use permit renewal either for or against. Anybody from the audience? Nobody? Uh, I will close the public hearing and I'll open it for uh, adoption of the ordinance 4652 uh, for a motion. More to approve. We second. have a motion. We have a second. Um, in this I open it for discussion from any of the city council members. <laughs> This particular specifics. I do want to add a specific, uh, Mr. Acevedo, and that is uh, to revisit the ordinance. Um, all banks come with driving, driving uh, lanes, you know, and uh, on the onset when they built the bank, we might need to give them a, a life permit that uh, instead of having to, to, to renew every year 
as far as that, so maybe we can entertain more banks. In uh, I know we have a lot of banks in Mission, yes. but you know, uh, I, I would like to, to for you to revisit that for us if it's, sure. if it's okay. Yes, sir. Does that open up for voting? All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, same sign. A motion carries. Item uh, 1.1F, public hearing. Thank you, Mayor and Council. Item 1.1F is a public hearing for a conditional use permit renewal for a temporary mobile home for health for the health care of resident parents at 909 South Stewart Road, being a tract of Lot 1, Paraxedis, Garza, Porcion 58, subdivision. The property is zoned R1, and the applicant is Maria Nelly Rodriguez. And if the council is inclined to approve this conditional use permit, it would require the adoption of an ordinance. On June 27, 2018, the Planning and Zoning Commission held a public hearing to consider this conditional use permit renewal. The property is located approximately 1,500 feet south of the Expressway 83 along the east side of Stewart Road. Currently, uh, Ms. Rodriguez is taking care of her elderly parents. This is a CUP that was originally approved in 1999, and then it was most recently renewed in 2015 for a period of three years. Uh, Ms. Rodriguez is taking care of her elderly parents. The current subdivision uh, ordinance allows you to move in a mobile home through a conditional use permit to take care of your parents or another family member should it be needed. There have been no issues with this conditional use permit. The, the, there was no opposition. The Planning and Zoning Commission approved or re, the renewal of this conditional use permit for a period of five years. Mm -hmm. Rather than having them come back every three years, they decided to extend it to five years. Staff is also recommending approval, subject to a five-year re-evaluation, that the property not be used as a rental structure. And once the intent is no longer evident, that the structure be removed within 30 days. Our city manager is also recommending approval. This is a public hearing. Item 1.1F is now before you. This is a public hearing and we open it for the audience to give us an input in favor or against uh, this conditional use permit renewal. <laughs> Step, state your name and uh, address for the record, ma'am, and in your position for or against. Good, good afternoon. My name is Marinelli Rodriguez and I am the owner of the house and I do take care of my parents and um, I would really appreciate it. And I know they would too, that if we, if we would go through. Thank you, ma'am. Thank, Thank you. Anybody else uh, from the audience in favor or against? To, this is a public hearing. <coughs> Again, this is a public hearing. Anybody in favor or against? I close the public hearing and I, I'll entertain the motion to adopt Ordinance 4653. Want to approve? Do we have a motion and second to approve uh, Ordinance uh, 4653. I open it for further individual discussion by any other city council purpose. No? I have no comments. Anybody? Uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Thank you, Mr. Acevedo. Moving right along, we're going to move to 2.0, disposition of minutes, 2.1, the City Council meeting on June 25th, 2018. Do I hear a motion? Move to approve the disposition of minutes. Second. We have a motion and second to dispose of City Council meetings for June 25th, 2018. I'll open it for further discussion. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed, same sign. Motion carries. 3.0, acknowledgement receipt of min minutes, 3.1, the Zoning Board of Adjustment on May 16, 2018, the Planning and Zoning uh, Commission, June 13, 2018, Citizens Advisory Committee, May 8, 2018, and May 29, 2018, and Mission Boys and Girls Club, May 9, 2018. And this I will entertain a motion or a... More to approve, Mayor. We have a motion and a second. I hear a second. Second. We have a second. I open it, open it for further discussion. Any questions on the acknowledgement of receipt of the minutes? In this, I open it for a vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, same sign. Motion carries. 
Moving to 4.0, approval and authorization, 4.1, Mr. Acevedo, preliminary plan approval. Thank you, Mayor and Council. Item 4.1 is a preliminary plot approval of Inspiration Heights subdivision. It's 7.196 acres of lot 13, Goodwin Track number three subdivision. The property is owned R1 single family. The developers are Lloyd Chapa and the engineers Melden and Hunt. Uh, the property is located approximately a quarter mile north of West Griffin Parkway, FM 495, along the west side of Inspiration Road. The applicant is proposing 38 single family residential lots, all meeting or exceeding the minimum 6,000 square foot that uh, is required. Uh, they will all have city water and sewer services. With regards to drainage, uh, this property or this uh, tract of land that's being developed is adjacent to a drain ditch and the applicant is proposing to widen the drain ditch and connect or discharge into that drain ditch. Uh, the PNZ recommended approval. Staff is recommending approval, as is our city manager. Item 4.1 is now before you. Do I hear a motion to approve? I move for approval as presented. Second. The motion to approve and second. And this I open it for further discussion. Uh, any city council member wants to specifically make any any points? No. I just open like to uh, to um, point out that they are um, expanding the irrigate. I mean the drainage ditch, ditch. which is something that would be uh, <coughs> positive for the city of Mission. Yes, thank you. Good point. All those in favor, say aye. 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 All those opposed, same sign. Motion carries. 4.2. Thank you, Mayor Council. Item 4.2 is a preliminary plat approval of Crystal Estates Phase 3 subdivision. This is a 12.51 acre tract out of lot 27-2 West Edition of Sherry Land subdivision. The property is owned R1 and the developer is DG and GG Investments LLC and Spore Engineering Consultants is the engineer. This uh, property is located on the northeast corner of Los Ebanos Road and Rebecca Street. Uh, they're proposing a total of 44 single-family residential lots. Uh, this is phase three of the Crystal Estates subdivision. The first subdivision started along Los Evanos. Uh, phase two, this is an old aerial, but phase two is located just abutting the first phase towards the center of that acreage. And then the, what's, sh what's highlighted in red is what's being proposed for phase three. Uh, it will have city water and city sewer and uh, just like the previous subdivision, uh, there is an abutting drain ditch that will be widened. And uh, as far as the widening, it's going to consist of widening the whole section from phase one all the way down to phase three. So they're not just widening the section in front of the subdivision that's being approved here tonight. Uh, the Planning and Zoning Commission recommended approval. Staff is also recommending approval, as is our city manager. Item 4.2 is now before you. And when you say widening, uh, what's the estimate span of the wide, of the width? I believe the engineer is here, Mr. Steve Spore. He would be better suited to answer that. Yes. Steve Spore, Spore Engineering Consultants, Joe to South Fourth, Macon, Texas. We're widening a, approximately 20 feet. According, and it's in accordance with the Delaware County Drainage District Number One specifications. But it's 20 feet in length or 20 feet in width? No, 20 feet in width. It's over a thousand feet in okay. length. Thank you. All that's, the way what to, I, that's what I want. All the way to Los Angeles. That's Road. what I wanted to hear. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Appreciate it. I move for approval of this presentation. We have a motion on the floor. Second. And we have a second motion on the floor to approve the preliminary plan approval. And this I open it for further discussion by any other city council member. <laughs> No discussion. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed say time. Motion carries. 4.3, Mr. Benson. Award of bids for palm tree trimming. Good afternoon, Mayor, City Council. I have before you item 4.13 is a award of bid for palm tree trimming. This involves the trimming of palm trees on city owned properties. Uh, regarding the parks and city facilities and also right-of-ways. We accepted and opened two bid responses for the service contract. Uh, the award of bid is suggested to go to Guadalupe Rodriguez, DVA, Rods, Lawn Care, 
who is the lowest responsive and responsible bidder at meeting all the specifications. His estimated cost in this contract is $9,010. Staff and city manager recommend approval. Do I have a motion to approve? A motion to approve. Do second. I have a second? second? Second has been an, all those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed, same sign. Motion carries unless Ms. Garza had something to say. I just had a qu real quick question. Uh -huh. Yes, ma'am. Right Do you have an, 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 uh, a muscle menos on how many trees those are? Well, we have a solid count, and actually the solid count is for $9,010. But yeah. uh, we have, you know, this is our second year going into this sort of contract, and I believe we've covered all of our bases. I know last year we found, I think, 26 more trees uh, during the course of the contract. But I believe it's all palm trees are covered on facilities and right of ways. We don't have an, uh, a, um, no, an estimate close. on how many trees mm -hmm. we actually have. Is, I think it was 540 trees that we're trimming. 540. Yes, ma'am. Okay. okay. All righty. Thank you. Thank you. Motion approved. 4.4 authorization in the, to execute first one year renewal option for. Pest Control Services for the City of Mission Buildings. Mr. Hernan Yes, sir. Good afternoon, Mayor, City Council. Uh, I come before you seeking authorization to execute a first year, uh, first one-year renewal option for pest control services for City of Mission Buildings. Uh, again, this is a first-year renewal with ProTech Pest Control. The pest control services are for all city bu buildings to be done on a quarterly basis. There is no increase in price for the renewal. Staff and City, uh, city Manager recommend approval. Do I hear a motion? More to approve. The second? Second. Do I hear a motion and second uh, to approve the authorization to execute first year, one year renew option for pest control services for the city of Mission Building. I open it for further discussion by any of the city council persons. No discussion. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, same sign. Motion carries, sir. Thank you. 4.5 authorization to purchase via state approved contract all necessary equipment to outfit one new Chevrolet Police Tahoe under by board contract 524-17. Chief Dominguez. Yes, Mayor, City Council. 4.5 is authorization to purchase via state approved contract all the necessary equipment to outfit one Chevrolet Tahoe under by board contract 524-17. The equipment relates to police lighting, prisoner cage, push bumper, gun rack, laptop, mounting system, etc. The total cost of the purchase is $10,981.46, will be funded through the City of Mission Capital As Assessment Replacement Fund. Staff and City Manager recommend approval. Do I hear a motion? Move to approve. We have a motion. Do I hear a second? Second. I hear a second. Uh, and this is open for further discussion by any of the City Council persons. No discussion. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, same sign. Motion carries. 4.6, approval of resolution number 1557 for the 2018 rifle resistant bulletproof vest grant from the Office of the Governor, grant number 349461. Chief Dominguez. Yes, Mayor of City Council, this grant uh, was already awarded to the City of Mission. Um, we did receive calls from the governor's office on several grants. This is one of four that are on here that uh, they're requesting uh, based on your appointment as the mayor of our city uh, to designate you as the authorized official. Staff and city manager request approval for the update of the resolution. Do I hear a motion? More to approve. Second. Do I hear a second? Second. We have a second now. Open it for further discussion by any of the city council persons. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, same sign. Motion carries. 4.7, approval of resolution number 1558 for the 2019 local border security program grant from the Office of the Governor's Grant, 299264. Chief Dominguez. Mayor, City Council, again, the Office of the Governor has requested that each resolution be updated with a new authorized official. Mayor Dr. Armando Cano will be designated as the authorized official for all grant resolutions. Staff and city manager request approval for the update of this resolution. Do I hear a motion? More to approval. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve the resolution 1558. I open it for further individual discussions by any of the city council persons. 
No discussion. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, same sign. Motion carries. 4.8 approval of resolution 1559 for the 2017 Operation Stone Guard Program grant from the Office of Governors for fiscal year 2018-2019 grant year number 317293. Chief Dominguez. Yes, Mayor, City Council, the Office of the Governor again requests that each resolution be updated with the new authorized official. Mayor Dr. Armando Cano will now be designated as the authorized official for all grant resolutions. Uh, staff and city manager request approval for the update of this particular grant. Do I hear a motion? Move to approve. Second. Do I hear a s We have a second. Uh, recognize second. a second then. This open it for further discussion by the city council. Any city council member? No. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? Same sign. Motion carries. 4.9, Chief. 4.9 is the approved resolution number 1560. 1560 for the 2016 Stone Garden grant program uh, from the Office of the Governor for FY 2016 grant here. Um, 3172902. Again, the Office of the Governor has requested that each resolution be updated with a new authorized official. Uh, Mayor Dr. Armando Caña will be designated as the authorized official. Staff and city manager request approval to update this resolution. Do I hear a motion? Mayor, move for approval. Second. A motion and a second. Um, open it for further discussion by any of the city councils. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Thank you. 4.10, approval of the resolution number 1561, requesting financial assistance. Uh, Mr. Salinas. Yes, sir. Uh, good afternoon, uh, Mayor, City Council members. I come before you seeking approval of a resolution uh, requesting financial assistance from the Texas Water Development Board, authorizing the filing of an application for such assistance and designating the mayor as a designated author authorized representative. The application will be filed and authorized with the Texas Water Development Board in an amount not to exceed $5,104,000 to, pro uh, to provide for the cost of the construction uh, of the North Mission EDA project. Staff recommendation, it's approval of resolution. Do I hear a motion? Move to approve. Second. Second, uh, open it for further discussion by any of the city council persons. No discussion. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed, same sign. Motion carries, Mr. Salinas. 4.11, authorized to execute payment for emergency for the for the North Water Treatment Plant filter number 12 repairs. Yes, sir. Uh, Mayor, City Council members, item 4.11 is the authorization to execute payment for emergency uh, for the North Water Treatment Plant filter number 12. Repair. In accordance with local government code, general exceptions, paragraph 252.022A12, a procurement made because of a public calamity that requires immediate appropriation of money to relieve the, necessi the necessity of the municipality's residents or to preserve the property of the municipality and a procurement necessary to preserve or protect the public health or safety of the municipality's residents. Hence, staff is seeking authorization as an emergency purchase for potable water uh, filter number 12 repairs due to a media loss through and under drain. The potential risk is for water production reduction and increase in water loss for back washing. The request is to execute payment for repairs by J&J uh, constructors, not to exceed not to exceed twenty-six thousand seven hundred six dollars with fifty cents. That's to include sand and anthracite media replacement and labor once emergency project is complete. Staff recommendation is approval for this emergency. Do I hear to approve this emergency purchase? So moved. Second. Any discussion from any of the other city council? All those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed, same sign. Motion passed. Approval of ordinance 4654, I'm confirming. Yes, sir. Amending the personnel policy manual by revisiting policy 200.08, the nepotism. Good afternoon, yeah. uh, Mayor and Council. Upon reviewing the personnel policy manual section 200.08, it was determined that our current policy is more restrictive than state law mandates. The amendments of this section of the policy is to be consistent with state law, which will allow those residents that are willing to participate in committees and advisory boards to be appointed. We are seeking direction from council. 
This I open it for uh, a motion. I move for approval. <coughs> Do I hear a second? I second, Mayor. We have a motion and a second. And this I open it for discussion by the City Council, the individual discussions. Please. Uh, Ms. Yes. Mungia, I have a question, Mayor. Go ahead. Ms. Mungia, this is just for advisory boards who are non-paying residents that correct. would like to participate right. that is correct. in our current advisory boards. Yes, just committees, advisory boards. This does not affect the employment portion of that policy. I, I do want to note also that historically, you know, I do have my, like, for instance, I have my son and my brother that are on the advisory board. They're not compensated for it. You know, as far as that is concerned, historically speaking, the city of Mission has had that practice, even with the with the previous uh, uh, with the previous uh, mayor that we had. His son served on the golf course advisory board also. So, so uh, you know, it's been a practice that has been happening. And you know, I think the intent of this uh, ordinance is to to balance it up and and, uh, and align it to the uh, to the state standards. Just the way I had to resign when I I declared my uh, my candidacy for, for mayor, the state law required me to, even though our, our city charter didn't require me to resign as far as that. And so I have, those, those are the things that are happening. So we're, what I want to just make the public know that this is uh, this is an alignment for the practices that we've been using uh, uh, in previous, uh, in, in historically uh, in the city of Mission. Correct. Just as stated, just committees and advisory boards. I, uh, mayor, I I understand, uh, and I and I agree with with your thoughts about it being a historical um, um, method of, of, of choosing and appointing um, residents to our to our um, advisory boards. However, I, I do have an issue with it being in the personnel policy manual. Um, I wish that I think there's another way to handle this. I think that if we don't have uh, policy that directly um, uh, refers to advisory boards and or volunteers, then that's the route that we should take uh, and and open up and and uh, create a new uh, chapter. Uh, this is two, this chapter happens to be 200 and it's employment practices um, and it's under employment practices. So, I mean, we all are in agreement that our uh, advisory board members are not employed. So I think that this is the wrong uh, chapter to to implement this, this, uh, this um, I'm going to call it a, a, policy. a, a, a policy, policy or, you know, just to kind of clean things up. And I think so that there isn't any confusion or that it's uh, misrepresented later. I think it really needs to be in its separate policy um, strictly for advisory board. Um. I, I would recommend that instead of a separate policy to make it an additional policy because I don't want to remove I don't want to remove the nepotism law from employment part and the employment part is the same article on the personnel manual which is uh, the, the article that we the, the section that we, we stated I don't want to remove the nepotism law I have no intentions of hiring my my, my my sons and my family, you know, in, in, in the city, you know, as, as far as that is concerned, you know, we, I don't, I have no intentions of changing the nepotism law under employment, but for the advisory board, you know, using the advisory, that's, that's where any needs to open another chapter for advisory and, and have that in, in there also additional, I, I, I'm in agreement with that. I don't know if there's a rush for this item, but um, maybe we can form a committee or, or work with um, on a workshop. Um, I don't know if there's an urgency to well, to have this approved there, there today. There really shouldn't be an urgency because we, we're not going to uh, appoint any anyone to right. advisory boards until December. So yeah. I feel like we have plenty of time to, to work with this and, and not be in a rush to to get something done and then and then you know uh, hindsight 2020 and then you know maybe discuss in a workshop or something. Yeah. I we want have to plenty recognize of workshops the, the city coming attorney. Up. I think you have something to add. Uh, yes, and, and Ms. Garza, you are correct in that the appointments uh, to advisory boards and committees happens uh, at the end of the year, uh, except for vacancies that happen in the middle of the year. And so that's the only, and I don't know that any exists. I just kind of wanted to bring that out there. But, and then the second, um, it sounds to me that there's, there was some discussion with regards to whether it even belongs in the policy manual or not. And, and so I, if the council wishes, I can address those questions in executive session under 551.071. Um, 
so that we can discuss the legal matters as it pertains to state law and why it is that our policy plays a part at all with regards to advisory boards, if the council wishes. I mean, it's. Well, I would rather have a kind of seated. workshop. We need yeah. to, because we're obviously not on the same page. I would, yeah. Do, do we have a motion to go into executive session? Yes. I have a motion on the floor and second. Do, does that stay on there until we come back from the, can I entertain the executive session for legal counsel? Yes, Mayor, uh, it, because it pertains to the particular motion on the on the floor. And then when we come back, we 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 can address pick up, the motion in the, the second. Uh, as we go along. Okay. Do I have a motion to go into executive session according to the law? Do I have a motion? I move. We have a motion. Do we have a second? I'll second, Mayor. We have a motion and second. And this I open it for for voting. All those in favor, say aye. 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 All those opposed, same sign. We are moving to executive session. I would like to entertain a motion to reconvene. So moved. So we have a motion second. to reconvene. Do I have a second? Second. Uh, we have a motion and second. Uh, and this I open it for voting. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, same sign. Motion carries. We re we're convening. Um, I will direct the uh, the uh, agenda item to to our legal counsel. Legal, do you want to brief us? Yes, Mayor. Uh, after <coughs> consultation with the attorney um, and after reviewing the documentation that is used as supporting documentation for this item, staff had recommended a uh, an amendment to subsection A that would have removed the wording appointed to serve from that subsection. However, after consultation with the attorney uh, in executive session, it, it is the consensus of the council that instead of that amendment that uh, an additional line be added after subsection A to indicate the following. This section does not apply to the appointment of advisory board members or volunteers as per state law. And if that is the consensus of the council, we would need a motion uh, recommending that uh, modification to the policy. So, I'll move. I'll move. Hold on. So what do I do with the current motion that's on the table? Do we do we uh, amend the motion or, or? We can either amend the motion or the movement can can withdraw the motion. Whoever second the motion, do you want to withdraw your second? I withdraw the second. We have the second being withdrawn. Do I the person that made the motion? Do you want to withdraw your motion? I withdraw. The motion has been withdrawn. So in this, I open it for uh, the motion. Ms. Garza, you want to? I'm. Um, <laughs> Um, move to approve the the reading that, that our uh, ordinance 4654. Yes. As corrected. As corrected, and also to add the um, to add a policy, uh, a separate chapter that directly relates to advisory boards and volunteers. Second. We have a motion and second to add the uh, the recommended uh, statement uh, our lawyer uh, gave us plus a chapter. Uh, for volunteers and, and advisory board. In this, I'll, I'll, any of the city council persons that want to give direct or feedback or, or comments, anybody? I just would like any changes to be for personnel policies to be discussed like in a workshop. Uh, I think the intention is good, but I uh, personally don't feel comfortable in voting for something like this. But uh, because you know it affects a lot of people, so I would vote against it. Good. Anybody uh, else? Mayor, I would like to make a comment. Um, originally, this uh, this uh, policy has been into place with the City of Mission since 2010. The amendment. Um, currently, we have had family members of our current current board, past mem mayor. Uh, children and family members on boards. Um, I posed the question to our city attorney because I wanted to do the right thing. Um, I'm for transparency and accountability. And so I asked, is it possible for one of my family members, if they asked and wish to serve on an advisory board, if it, that is possible? And so currently, the way the policy is written, they couldn't. But yet, we've already set precedents because it has already been happening for years. And so I wanted to make sure, keeping with transparency, and we're live, and anyone here in the audience can ask questions, call with any concern that you may have. 
Um, and so we decided to put it, I didn't know that it was going to come out with nepotism and all this stuff. Ms. Nori Garza makes a good point. We need to maybe discuss this a little more further. Also other things within the city. And so I thank you for, um, for having all these uh, constituents and members of our community that have called and expressed uh, that they would like to be in an advisory board. And now anyone in our audience or out in the public listening to us can serve on an advisory board. All you have to do is come into City Hall and apply, and we'll look into uh, what board's available for you to give back to your community as a volunteer. I also want to quench Mr. Plata's concern also. We, we are going to be calling in the future a workshop to review and be able to develop the chapter that we're talking about. Uh, then uh, if the motion passes. Thank you, sir. And this I call for, for uh, a vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed saying sign. Aye. Motion carries four to one. Mr. Rasa, approval of resolution authorization. Uh, Mayor City Council, good afternoon. Uh, 1562. Yes, sir. It, there would be approval of resolution 1562. This is item 4.13 on the agenda. Uh, we are seeking authorization of the issuance of certificate of obligation in the amount not to exceed 12.5 million for the following purposes. The purchase of the commercial sanitation vehicles and commercial garbage bins, construction, repairs, rehabilitation, and renovation of municipal buildings, to include professional services for the purpose of planning and designing improvements and payment of the cost of issuance of the certificate of obligation. The action required in this item is the approval of the mentioned above caption order to complete the formal process for the tax notice financing. Um, RBC Capital Markets, our financial advisor, will also be present with us here today, which is uh, Dusty Trailer, who's with us here in the audience, and he also has a presentation in case there's any questions. I will recognize Mr. Taylor, uh, approach the bench and, uh, and give us the, the briefing of your presentation, sir. Thank you. Hi. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Taylor. Good evening, good afternoon, Mayor, members of City Council. My name is Dusty Trailer, a Managing Director with RBC Capital Markets. We have the honor and privilege of serving the City of Mission as your financial advisor for uh, financing matters for bonds. The presentation before you this afternoon just kind of provides a, a, a brief summary of the City's um, outstanding bond portfolio as well as a discussion regarding the the capacity to finance this certificate of obligation so within within uh, section one of the presentation on page three we have a, a summary of the city's outstanding uh, tax secured bond obligations and what you'll note from that from that presentation on page three as the city currently has thirty six point two million dollars worth of obligations outstanding but that is actually a has been reduced from the original amount of fifty four point six five million you've paid down nearly twenty million dollars of the existing bonded obligation over over the course of the past several years then on, on page number four we have the same analysis but, but for the city's obligations related to utility system financings, uh, much like the, the Texas Water Development Board request that, that the city has done today. Th this, this dollar amount outstanding is $34.2 million outstanding, and that is also reduced from the original par amount of, 50, of $43 million. So you have paid down approximately $9 million of that outstanding amount. You've done a good job of paying down the, the bonded debt over the course of the past few years. And then, and then you'll see over on page number five, we have a discussion related to this $12.5 million certificate of obligation and the assumptions that we used in the analysis. And we get to the analysis over on page number six, 
We've assumed that these certificates of obligation would be amortized in line with the existing obligations that the city has outstanding and paid back over a period of 15 years. That's actually a reduced number of years. Normally when a city goes out to do a certificate of obligation like this type, uh, it would normally be amortized over a period of 20 years. But because of your capacity, uh, it looks like you've got the ability to amortize it over a shorter period of time. That should save the city uh, uh, interest expense o over the course of that time. Just like if you or I were to pay off our, our home mortgage over a, a shorter period of time, pay it off faster, we would have less interest expense. So that's to the benefit of the city. And, and you'll notice there over on page six, the amortization, which is outlined in columns I through M, uh, and then over in column O, the estimated tax rate impact. And what I'll point out to you is that through the amortization of this $12.5 million and uh, the supplement of that payment from the solid waste fund, because some of these, these projects, these items being purchased with this certificate will be paid for from solid waste, the city will be able to do that within its existing $0.08 cent interest and in sinking fund tax rate. You currently levy $0.08 cents on the uh, ad valorem taxes for the repayment of debt, you'll be able to continue levying that same eight cents. You will not need to increase it related to this financing. Okay. okay. We currently estimate, uh, we, were, we, were look, we ran these numbers today at a, very, at a conservative rate of interest. We ran them at about a, a four and a quarter percent interest rate. If we were going to be in the market today uh, actually selling these bonds, we would have anticipated uh, a, having an interest rate of probably three and a half or so percent. So we've got some cushion in these numbers, but we always like to be conservative in our in our analysis and calculations just to make sure we've got room in case there are any surprises in the market. Any, any, any questions? Any questions by the council before I entertain a motion? No questions. No, sir. no, no question. Okay. I entertain a motion to approve uh, resolution 1562. So moved. Second. We have a motion and second to approve uh, resolution 1562 authorizing publication of the city notice of intent to issue <coughs> certificate of application in the amount not to exceed $4.5 million as authorized under our state law. And this is our last comment by any individual city council. No? All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, same sign. Motion carries and 4.14 approval of resolution 1563 designating the mayor of Mission of City of Mission as authorized representative of the City of Mission to give notice of intent to reimburse expenditures with proceeds of tax exemption obligations. Uh, Mr. Garza. Uh, yes, Mayor, that's correct. The uh, tax resolution designates the mayor as the authorized representative of the City of Mission to give notice of intent to reimburse expenditures with proceeds of tax exempt obligations. The purchase of commercial sanitation vehicles and commercial garbage bins, construction, repair, rehabilitation, and renovation of municipal buildings to include professional services for the purpose of planning and designing improvements and payment of the cost of insurance issuance of the certificates of obligations. We're seeking approval for this resolution. I entertain a motion. Move to approve. Second. Second. Uh, and this, uh, any city council person wants to do that, uh, anything? All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Uh, any unfinished mission? None. Um, we'll uh, ask the city manager if he has any routine matters, city manager's comment. Mr. Garza, 6.1. Uh, well, Mayor, I just want to advise the uh, public that we did attend a meeting um, in West Laco today, uh, Mayor Ocaña and myself, regarding FEMA. Uh, FEMA is already here in the valley. They're going to be concentrating on Cameron County and the County of Hidalgo. Uh, some areas, of course, uh, in West Laco and some areas here in Mission. So we're going to be working very closely with our, our emergency management coordinator, James Cardoza, who's going to be in contact with the county. Uh, we had submitted a letter on behalf of the mayor last week, or, yeah, about last week, I think, where we were asking for a disaster, disaster recovery uh, location here in Mission, which is the one we used last time on South uh, Mayberry. And so we're hoping that we're going to have a designation here in Mission to serve not only our Mission residents, but also the municipalities just west of us. And so we hear nothing but good news. There's a lot of rules that uh, are being placed out there. There's a lot of recommendations for our citizens to also look for to make sure that we don't get involved in being victims of any type of fraud that might be out there. 
And so through our social media and through our media department, we're sending out all that information so the public can be very aware, well aware of uh, what's happening and the days that they're actually going to go out there and do inspections. So we're looking forward to do that. And they're going to be here within, they're going to be here the following 60 days, I believe. Mm -hmm. Yes. When will they let us know if they're going to set up shop in Mission? Within the next 10 days, as far as uh, setting up a hub here in Mission. Okay. As of right now, the state uh, has indicated that through a text to me that they are they are we're one of the three sites hmm. in Mission. To, okay. You know, they're working on just the logistics and the and the contracts and so forth. As far as that is concerned. Anything else, Mr. Garcia? Six point one. Six point two. The mayor is. I got a couple of things. One is uh, one of the things that I learned today at the at the FEMA meeting was uh, to let the public know, and I want to let the public know that uh, there are three levels of uh, funding from uh, uh, three, three levels of applications that uh, FEMA has provided for. One is directed to FEMA, the, which is round one, which is direct. Uh, so you apply and, and, and you do the application online or in person uh, or, or on site if you get uh, visited by an inspector on site or request to an individual on site. As far as that is now, if, if that doesn't fan out and you get a denial and denial uh, uh, the best recommendation is to file an appeal because a lot of times the appeal is is a very simple thing you left out something in the application blank you know and so so file your appeal to make sure that uh, so FEMA can re, re, review, review that in that uh, process with you and then the second part of that is that if you don't qualify for the FEMA because of your income or whatever you know, the Small Business Administration also offers uh, small uh, in interest loans at, at a low low interest uh, at low interest rate, and they'll ask you to apply to apply for that. Now, uh, uh, people say, "Well, I you know, I I want to go to level three of, of of the FEMA process." Well, you cannot go to level three on the FEMA process unless you apply on the Small Business Administration loan. So apply for that. If you get denied, then then you can apply for level three. But if you don't apply for the Small Business Administration loan, then you automatically be denied that level three funding. And level three funding is the one that has a lot of specific things that that you lost in the, in the, during the flood that they can assist if you qualify. Again, everything goes on qualifications. You've got to qualify for it. But there's three levels. But uh, uh, the word that, they, that was pushed by FEMA representatives was that if we deny you, appeal. So I just want to make that message to the, to the, uh, to the public, you know, that, uh, and to the audience that is here present, that, uh, that FEMA is, going, is here. You don't go on the website and, and apply. And you don't have to. You can do it online. And, it's, and, and you can, actually, you can do all the transactions online with them. But if you get a phone call from the inspector, once you apply, make sure you answer the phone. If you're like me, you know, I get I get phone calls from Wisconsin or Washington or Virginia, I don't answer them. You know, I let them go to my message center, you know. Uh, also, our, our website uh, in, our, in our city has a link to, to the FEMA, to the FEMA application also, just to let you know as far as that is concerned. That's item one that I wanted to, for, to, to bring to the public. Item two that I want to bring to the public is you probably noticed that uh, that uh, we're starting the meetings at 4:30. You know, as far as that is concerned, you know, and I know in, in my uh, in my 100-day uh, 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 plan that we were going to start at 5:30. Well, I, it's not that I have forgotten about the uh, about my 100 plan. I just want to let the public know that if I would have uh, in the first meeting I would have changed it from 4:30. To 5:30, it would have cost the city approximately $5,000 every meeting because uh, we have already, already um, by by the time that I came into office, um, planning and zoning had already sent pu public hearings to many many ordinances and many many public hearings. So so I, I asked them to to stop sending out public hearings at 4:30, and 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 the plan is to start to start the 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 5:30 meetings in August. So we didn't have to spend uh, over fifty thousand uh, dollars resending all the public hearings. So, so I just want to face the, the public and let them know that in the effort, in the spirit of saving fifty thousand dollars to the city, well, I put a little delay on uh, on uh, starting at five thirty. But it's around the corner. It's in the future. Just want to let you let them know. And at this time, I move to six point three, and I start from from uh, place number four and go down 
Please come before. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I just want to express my condolences to the family of Gilbert Garcia, the firefighter who passed away of cancer last week. Uh, a thousand years ago when I was a volunteer, Gilbert was there. And I know he retired from the EFD and he was an all-around good guy. Uh, him and his wife phoned the, oh, uh, the ice house there in Francisco. So, uh, yeah. Terrible loss and uh, we'll be there tomorrow at, uh, at the Guadalupe. I don't have any comments today, Mayor. Okay. I think I've talked enough today. That's okay. <laughs> place three. No, no more comments? Not place two. No comments. Thank you. Okay, place one. I'm excited to report that uh, uh, City Manager Martin Garza gave me an update this week that he has made contact with an agency that uh, possibly may be helping with the independent performance and management review of all departments. I know that three meetings ago I mentioned that I thought it was a good idea for us to do something like that to involve our employees. And uh, thank you, Martin, for uh, hearing uh, my recommendation. And so hopefully that good things are to come in this beautiful city of Mission. Thank you, Place One. And this I entertain 7.0. Do I have a motion to go to executive, per, uh, executive session? I move to. We have a motion. Do I hear a second? Second. We have a motion and second to move into executive session. Uh, in this, I open it for, for discussion. No discussions. Then uh, all those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed, same sign. We will be back. I would like to entertain a motion to reconvene. I'll move. Second. We have a motion. We have a second to reconvene. In this, uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, same sign. And. Um, we are convened again. Re returning from the executive session, I would I would call. Let me call the uh, the item the item from executive <coughs> session 7.1 personnel matters, and I will refer to our our city attorney. Yes, Mayor. After discussion in executive session regarding personnel matters. It, uh, it appears that the consensus of the council is to create a subcommittee to assess and evaluate the municipal court so as to expand services to the community. Uh, thank you, Mr. Flores. Uh, I would like to appoint uh, Mr. Ruben Plata and uh, Gus Martinez to serve on the subcommittee with the city manager and our city attorney. Uh, that will be our, our, our subcommittee. Yes, sir. I make a motion to approve. Uh, do, do we have a motion and do I have a second to approve the appointment? Second. Do we have a second to approve the appointment of the subcommittee? And this, uh, or any other further discussions or any individual uh, on the city council's comments? All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, opposed same side. Motion carries and uh, we'll entertain the motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. We have a motion and second to adjourn. Non-debatable uh, uh, motion. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed, same sign. Uh, motion carries.